welcome everyone to a new tutorial. It's been a while and I really appreciate your patience as I've been working through the last couple of months. I lost my husband to cancer and I've been putting our family back together. One of the things I've been doing is cleaning up and I've been looking at some of my husband's collection of steer skulls. He loved cowboy art and cowboy music and these steer skulls were part of that. So I thought I would try and dot paint one but I knew this was going to be really difficult because they are cracked and pitted and um, very difficult to do dot painting on, but I wa really wanted to figure this out. So I decided to use this wood filler on the biggest crack down the forehead of the skull because I knew I wanted to put um, a mandala right there in the center of the forehead and I needed it to be smooth to look right. But I left the other cracks to give it some character. I also went online and searched for some bead patterns. He really loved um, bead patterns on um, belts and so I, I thought I would start with a belt pattern but I needed to practice it on a piece of paper first. So I just used a ruler and a charcoal white pencil and a couple paper triangles to just do a simple belt pattern. And these are the paints I used. I'll list them in the comments. Just some Martha Stewart and a little Liquitex pouring medium. And I wanted to get a few shades of uh, dark blue to turquoise and then ending in a white. So I added the pouring medium and stirred them up with my paintbrush. And I made these a little bit thicker than I, I normally use for dot painting. I wanted them to have soft peaks that would collapse so I knew they would stay in place and the little beads of paint were not going to run into each other and make kind of a mess. I wanted them to be distinct dots and I was just going to use one tool for all the dots. All the dots have to be the same size to look like little seed beads. So here's the first pattern I tried. Just doing uh, three dots and then two and then one to make a little pyramid trying to get them as close together without touching and it's just good to um, practice with your paints just so you get a feel for just how close you can get those dots without having them sort of melt into each other and I just kept working on this pyramid pattern did uh, a couple shades of blue and then I went back to white and you'd be surprised how forgiving these patterns can be you feel like you're not getting it exactly because the paint dots are not exactly the same size. They're a little bit different and so you don't get the um, exacting lines you would with a real bead. But when you step back and look at it, it really does look like beadwork. It, it ends up um, getting the effect that I wanted. So here I am just filling on the, in the other side. I'm making a little pyramid again with the turquoise and then starting with a darker row and you just sort of offset each little bead to fit it in that space in between the two beads underneath it and then I went for a little lighter shade and just kept filling in the space And I was kind of rushing on this. I wasn't being as exact as I would if I were working on the real skull. I just kind of wanted to get a feel for it. And same with this. I knew I wanted a couple different circular patterns. One was just going to be the regular um, what mandala that we do a lot. And um, I wanted to do one, instead of working from the center out, I wanted to work from the outer ring in and do it in a beaded pattern. So I just thought I would do this gradient. This is something that's um, often done on um, blanket work to weavings. Blanket weavings is this gradient. And then filling in the space with turquoise.
and then filling in another ring of turquoise. And I thought i will just use the back side of my pencil to do a center dot here. And do eight dots around that. And make a, a slightly larger spoke going out to the turquoise ring. And I thought I would fill in with this sort of a green, a lime green, and then fill in the spaces with the turquoise again. These um, beaded rosettes are very common in uh, Southwest Indian beadwork. So I had the belt pattern, and then I had the rosette pattern, and then I thought I would do one more uh, diamond pattern that was a little bit different. I made a row of white and then I offset a row of yellow and then I counted five and did a black dot counted five and did a black dot counted five and did a black dot and did that all the way across and then I filled in the space with sort of this lime green until I got to the black dot and then just skipped over that filled in the next space skipped over the black dot all the way to the end and then I did two brown dots on either side of the black dot. And then I'm going to fill in that space with a little bit darker green, skipping over the brown dots. And then a little lighter shade of brown and a single dot. Again, filling in the space in between with another shade of green, a little bit darker. And back to a lighter shade of brown in two dots. And I'm going to fill in the space with uh, turquoise, I think. Yep. Once you get going on these, they're really, really fun. I found that this was really enjoyable and, and so different from all the other uh, mandala work I'd done making petals and making round things. It was really fun to work in lines real challenge. And it's fun to look at different bead patterns on jewelry and on belts and on fabrics just to get some ideas of color combinations and uh, patterns in working out the beads. So once I had some good practice I painted the skull black and I started drawing on my guidelines with the charcoal white pencil. I just kind of laid some paper patterns on there and started filling them in. And it was really, really different from working on a canvas or working on a stone. Because this surface was just really difficult to work with. The, the uh, bone is very dry and it the paint wants to stand up on top of it in a weird way. I know that you can get resin skulls too that are a lot smoother and they're not as heavy as a real skull so you don't have to really heft it when you're trying to get on the sides of the skull. They're a lot less expensive too. I think a real skull runs about $150 and the resin skulls I think run about $30 or $40. I just decided to do a final diamond shape on the very top of the skull. And then I got two of my husband's horsehair hat bands and decided to wrap those around the base of the horn where there's a big crack. I filled that in with some Gorilla Glue and then I wrapped the horsehair hat band around the base of the horn pulled it very tight and then put on more glue. I just kept pulling it tight and making sure it was lined up and I wanted the tassels to hang down next to the eye socket and make sure it was level with the tassels on the other side of the skull as well. And this is the finished product. I really really like how it turned out and my kids really love it too. Um, this was 
right up my husband's alley. I know that he would have really uh, enjoyed this. We saw some beaded skulls at some restaurants in Jackson Hole that he really admired, and this is a lot like them. So I was happy to do this for him and for our family. So I hope you'll give it a try. I think I'm going to try another color scheme on another one of these and see how it turns out. You just never know how you can use the dot art techniques on other products. Thank you.